we proposed in my team actually that the sun is is a is the ultimate pinnacle of telescope design. Mm-hmm. But flying to a thousand AU is a real pain in the butt because it's just going to take so long. <laughs> and so a, a more practical way of achieving this might be to use the Earth. Now the Earth doesn't have anywhere near enough gravity to create a substantial gravitational lens, um, but it has an atmosphere. And that atmosphere refracts light, it bends light. So whenever you see a sunset, um, just as the sun setting below the horizon, it's actually already beneath the horizon. It's just that the light is bending through the atmosphere. It's actually already about half a degree down beneath. And what you're seeing is, is, that, is that curvature of the light path. Um, and your brain interprets it, of course, to be following a straight line because your brain always thinks that. Um, and so you can use that bending. Whenever you have bending, you have a telescope. And so we've proposed to my team that you could use this refraction to similarly create an Earth-sized telescope. Hmm. Called the Terrascope. The Terrascope. We have yeah. a great video on this. Yeah. And uh, this. Do you have a paper on the Terrascope? I do. Yeah. Great. Um, you sometimes get confused with this because they've heard of an Earth sized telescope because of the, may have heard of the Event Horizon Telescope, mm-hmm. which took an image of, um, what's well, taken an image right now of the center of our black hole. And it's you know, very impressive. And it previously did Messi 87, a nearby supermassive black hole. And so those images were interferometric. So they were small telescopes scattered across the Earth. And they combined the light paths together interferometrically to create effectively an Earth-sized um, angular resolution. Telescopes always have two properties. There's the angular resolution, which is how small of a thing you can see on the surface. And then there's the magnification. How much brighter does that object get versus just a, your eye or some small object? Now, what, what the Event Horizon Telescope did, it traded off um, amplification or magnification for for the angular resolution that's what it wanted it wanted that high angular resolution but it doesn't really have much photon collecting power because each telescope individually is very small the telescope is different because it is literally collecting light with a with a light bucket which is essentially the size of the earth and so that gives you both benefits potentially not only the high angular resolution that a large aperture promises you, but also actually physically collects all those photons. So you can detect light from very, very far away, the very outer edges of the universe. Um, and so we, yeah, we propose this as a possible future uh, technological way of achieving these, these extreme goals, ambitious goals we have in astronomy. But um, it's a very difficult system to test because you essentially have to fly out to these focus points and these focus points lie beyond the moon. So you have to have someone who is willing to fly beyond the moon and hitchhike an experimental telescope onto it and do that cheaply. If it was something doing low earth orbit, it'd be easy. You could just attach a CubeSat to the next Falcon 9 rocket or something and test it out. It'd probably only cost you a few tens of thousands of dollars, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars. But to, there's basically no one who flies out that far except for... Uh, bespoke missions such as like a mission that's going to Mars or something that would that would pass through that kind of space. And they typically don't have a lot of leeway in excess payload that they're willing to strap on for radical experiments. So that's been the problem with it. In theory, it should work beautifully, but it's a very difficult idea to experimentally test. Can you elaborate why the focal point is that far away? So you get about half a degree bend from the Earth's atmosphere um, when you're looking at the sun at the horizon, and you get that two times over if you're outside of the planet's atmosphere because it comes, you know, the star is half a bend to you still on the horizon and half a degree back out the other way. So you get about a one degree bend. Mm-hmm. You take the radius of the Earth, which is about 7,000 kilometers, and do your arc tan function, you'll end up with a distance that's about, two, it's actually the, the inner focal point is about two thirds the distance of the Earth-Moon system. The problem with that inner focal point is not useful because that light ray path had to basically scrape the surface of the Earth. So it passes through the clouds, it passes through all the thick atmosphere, it gets a lot of extinction along the way. If you go higher up in altitude, you get less extinction. In fact, you can even go above the clouds, and so that's even better because the clouds obviously are going to be a pain in the neck for doing anything optical. Um, But the problem with that is that the atmosphere, because it gets thinner at higher altitude, it bends light less. And so that pushes the focal point out. So the most useful focal point is actually about three or four times the distance of the Earth-Moon separation. And so that's what we call one of the Lagrange points, essentially, out there. And so there there is a stable orbit. It's kind of the outermost stable orbit you could have around the Earth. 
Um, so the atmosphere uh, does bad things to the, to, to the signal. Of, yeah, of it's light. A, it's absorbing light. Um, is that possible to reconstruct this, the to 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 remove the noise, whatever? It is. So it's just strength. It's not nothing else. It's possible to reconstruct. I mean, to some degree, we do this. There's a technology called adaptive optics that can correct for what's called wavefront errors that happen through the Earth's atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere is turbulent. It is not a single plane of air of the same density. There's all kind of wiggles and currents in the air. And so that each little layer is uh, bending light in, in slightly different ways. And so the light actually kind of follows a wiggly path on its way down. What that means is that um, two light rays, which are traveling at slightly different spatial separations from each other, will arrive at the detector at different times uh, because one maybe goes on more or less a straight path and the one wiggles down a bit more before it arrives. And so you have an incoherent um, light source. Um, and when you're trying to do image reconstruction, you always want a, a coherent light source. So the way they correct for this is that this, if this path had to travel a little bit faster, uh, the straight one goes faster and the wiggly one takes longer, the mirror is deformable. And so you actually bend the mirror on this on the on the straight one down a little bit to make it an equivalent light path distance. So the mirror itself has all these little actuators. And it's actually made up of like thousands of little elements, almost looks like a liquid mirror because they can manipulate it in kind of real time. And so they scan the atmosphere with a laser beam to tell what the deformations are in the atmosphere and then make the corrections to the mirror to account for it. That's amazing. So you could you yeah. could do something like this for the telescope, but it would be... Um, it's cheaper and easier to go above the atmosphere and just fly out. I think so. It would be very, it's a very, that's a very challenging thing to do. And normally when you do adaptive optics, as it's called, you're looking straight up. So you're, you know, or very close to straight up. If you look at the horizon, we basically never do astronomical observations on the horizon because you're looking through more atmosphere. Mm -hmm. the, if you go straight up, you're looking at the thinnest portion of atmosphere possible. But as you go closer and closer towards the horizon, you're increasing what we yeah. call the air mass, the amount yeah. of air you have to travel through. So here it's kind of the worst case because you're going through the entire atmosphere in and out again yeah. with a telescope. So you'd need a very impressive adaptive optic system to correct for that. So yeah, I would say it's probably simpler, at least for proof of principle, just to test it with, um, with, with, with having some satellite that was at a much wider orbit.